This is the most famous fossil fish of all, dare I say. I'm not a fish person, but uh, if it's not the most famous fossil fish, it should be. Um, this thing is only known from this. This was found in 1899 in the Permian of Russia, and the original guy who found it recognized it as shark teeth, but, you know, but how does that fit into a jaw? He, he was trying every which way he could to put this onto a shark. Um, we still don't really know what the deal is. So here are two reconstructions. One has uh, uh, the lower jaw coiled outside of the mouth. One has the lower jaw coiled inside the mouth. Uh, regardless, both of those are so bizarre. Uh, by the way, this original specimen was stolen in 1998. Uh, Russian museums are unfortunately infamous for having things being swiped. Thankfully, in 1999, they found it in a dealer stock, and the, the dealer was told, well, by the way, don't you know that's a holotype in a museum? He said, oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry, here you go. So now it's back in its rightful place. One of the most bizarre uh, fossil fish, if not the most bizarre fossil fishes ever. Now, the chimera fishes are still alive today, but I don't know, I just get turned on by this thing. Uh, look at that beautiful, complete uh, uh, fossil chimera fish. Bizarre. Wow. Let's pick on dinosaurs for a few minutes. The sauropods, those are the ones with ridiculously big bodies, ridiculously long uh, tails, ridiculously long necks, walking on four legs. Some of them have the front legs longer, some of them have the back legs longer, but they all basically look the same. The sauropods, brontosaurus, diplodocus, things like this. Well, there's one famous one that had uh, the neural uh, uh, crests, uh, the neural spines on the <laughs> neck vertebrae, extremely elongated. Most dinosaurologists say, oh, there was a sail there, kind of like Dimetrodon, the famous uh, reptile in the late Paleozoic. Other dinosaurologists have said, no, those were just spikes sticking out of the neck. And presumably it's for protection. Have you ever seen uh, nature documentaries uh, in Africa? Wh where is it that lions and cheetahs and leopards like to go after their prey? You know, a you know, gazelle or a zebra or, or something. They go after the neck. Okay, so if you see a lion grab a gazelle, it grabs it by the neck and just holds it. And the gazelle just can't do anything. It just thrashes around while it dies. <laughs> so the neck is what the predators like to go after. It's the most vulnerable part of the body. Yes, the rest of the body is also vulnerable. But if you've got long spikes around your neck, that's a way of saying to predators, hey, don't think about eating meat. So this is the most bizarre sauropod I've ever uh, come across. Um, here is uh, one of the most bizarre theropod dinosaurs. Everyone knows the theropods from Holosaurus and uh, Tyrannosaurus and things like this. Now, the feathers on this thing are purely speculative, but it's the skull that really intrigues me. I mean, I've seen a lot of bizarre dinosaurs, but, but look at this thing. Look at this odd, bony uh, crest on the front part of the skull. And take a look. It's got just a small nubbin of, of teeth on the upper palate. Not on the edge of the mouth where you'd expect teeth to be, but on the upper palate like that. Unbelievably bizarre creature. Now, the feathers on that previous one were speculative, but we do have dinosaurs with feathers reserved. Um, we have quite a few of them now. Um, there are dinosaurs, some dinosaurs are famous for having follows, uh, feathers. This was the first one ever found with feathers. Um, this is Sinoceropteryx, uh, Sinoceropteryx prima from uh, the Cretaceous of China. I have actually been in the presence of this specimen. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of like going in to see the original Declaration of Independence or the Magna Carta. It's like, oh my gosh, that's the real thing, just right there. So I didn't steal that photo. That is my photo. I was actually in the presence of this. This was actually uh, in, on display in America for a short while, but now it's back in China. So this is famous for being the first ever dinosaur fossil uh, found with, uh, with, with feathers on it. Let's go back to hominids. I showed you a hominid preserved in cave popcorn. This is the oddest hominid ever based on the shape of his skull. In fact, most people would say, oh, James, that's, that, that's not a fossil human. Yeah, it is. James, that doesn't look like a fossil human. I'm sorry, it is. But James, you know, look, look, look the, 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 the face goes forward, and it's got, it's got a crest on the top of the skull. You know, humans aren't like that. Tough. This is a fossil human. This is the bizarrest ever one known. Um, this is a strongly prognathic uh, face, and it has a, a, a sagittal crest on the top of its skull. Um, this is one of the most famous uh, fossil hominids ever. Um, this, uh, this type of uh, fossil human is called Paranthropus. That uh, group died out, obviously. Finish up the talk, let's look at some other oddities. I like trilobites. Sometimes you can find healed bite marks, and sometimes you can figure out who is eating whom. So here's one from Utah. Here's one from uh, here in Ohio. And speaking of eating other things, here are some shark teeth scrape marks on a whale bone. You know how big and fearsome you have to be in order to be eating whales? 
Well, some fossil sharks got to be ginormous. So, uh, and then here's evidence for that. Uh, this is also kind of unusual. Uh, you find uh, injuries uh, in the fossil record. You also find uh, cancer. So here's some bone cancer in a sauropod dinosaur bone. This is on display at Carnegie. Um, this is in my teaching collection at o Ohio State New York. Um, this is an ordinary uh, Green River uh, fossil fish from the Eocene of Wyoming, and it's got a partially digested fish in its stomach. Okay? Sometimes we have found fossil fish with fish in their stomachs, but this one's partially digested. You can see the backbone, you can see what's left of the head. Unusual preservation. I didn't even realize I had this. Uh, back to the Cambrian. The world famous Burgess Shale, the most famous, the most common fossil there is something called Morella. Take a look at that. That's the gut juices squeezed out. Oh, I know that's kind of icky, but, but that's cool. And just a couple years ago, they found one of these things in the act of molting. Oh my gosh. Wow. I mean, oh, what? Holy, but there it is. I mean, there's no doubt that that is what they're saying it is to be. I mean, what else could that be? I mean, this thing was caught in the act of molting. Back to crinoids. Some of you may have heard that sometimes we find fossil crinoids attached to logs. It's true. We find them in America, we find them in Europe, we also find them in Asia. Here's some of the more spectacular localities from Asia, some traumatocrinus. You know, just dozens of them attached to this fossil log. Now, these fossil logs were floating at the sea surface, and the crinoids were attached to it, and they were dangling down below the log. Now, normal crinoids are on the seafloor, right? They are filter feeders, and because they're on the seafloor and they don't move around, they're called sesselbenthic. Well, okay, if you're in the water column floating around, you're a planktonic organism. But since these things are attached to logs that are floating, uh, paleontologists have called these crinoids pseudoplanktonic because technically they are floating up in the water column, but you know they can't help it that they're attached to logs and the logs are floating. So here's you know a pseudoplanktonic crinoid. So beautiful preservation and odd lifestyle. Let's look at something from the Cincinnatian. I take my students to uh, uh, Caesar Creek uh, to collect fossils every year. Last year, one of my students said, hey, James, is there a place here at Caesar Creek Spillway where I can find something unusual? And I said, well, I could show them the starfish bed, but, you know, I want to kind of keep that secret. But, well, oh, what, you know, whatever, you know, I'll, you know, maybe he'll find one. I, you know, of course he won't find one. So I, I took him over to where there's a starfish bed. I said, yeah, three or four slabs, decent starfish have been found in this area. Uh, of course, I haven't found them, but I've seen other people find them. So, but, but here we are, and so, you know, good luck. Two minutes later, he comes down from the tailless pile with something in his hands. He said, hey, James, is this what you're talking about? You know, I, I hate to admit this, but you know, I, 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 I was cussing and swearing in front of my students because I was just having a seizure of excitement. I mean, just, oh, yes, 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 yes. Look at that beautiful starfish. You don't see them better than this. And what's extra cool, uh, Dan Blake, who's a fossil starfish worker, he's identified this as Promo Paleaster. For those of you who know your Cincinnati fossils, Promo is a fine barbed critter. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a six-armed Promo. It's a mutant. It's a mutation. No, it's not X-Men. It's just, you know, this sort of thing happens, okay? Um, this was found just last year. And thankfully, he was decent. He donated it. So if you want to go, so, so for those of you who want to research this or look at it, it's in the Orton Geology Museum now. So go figure. You know, I, I show him where they are, and he finds them. Every time I go collecting, I find fossil broken clams. Now, it's um, not just weird things today. Sometimes we have to recognize that fossils that are recognizable, you know, understandable today, okay, these are aminoids, which are squid shells, okay, no problem there, They're, those are not odd. Yeah, but for people three or four hundred years ago, they were odd. In England, these are fairly common, some of the concretions there. In the old days, they thought these were fossilized, headless snakes. And they made up this legend. Oh, the abbess of this abbey up there, you know, she, uh, she was uh, disgusted with all the snakes, you know, just, uh, you know, coming in and creating a nuisance. So she cut all their heads off and threw their bodies over the cliff. And so you can still see them today. Well, they're ammonites, uh, pyrotized ammonites and concretions, but people still carve heads on them as, a, as in a tribute to that little story. So we know what ammonites are like today, but in the past, people didn't know what to make of them. So even though they're no longer odd today, they were odd to people long ago. I want to end this talk by saying, okay, is there such a thing as an alien fossil? Well, some people think so. 
Some people really got excited when they found this face on Mars image. Um, it turns out that's just uh, this thing right there. It's, it's, it's not carved, it's not evidence for civilization. However, this rock, which is provably from Mars, does have fossil bacteria in it. I'm sure a lot of you he remember hearing about this in the news. I'm sure a lot of you remember hearing, well, you know, wasn't that discounted and you know, those aren't real? Okay, well, let me update you. Um, the shape makes sense with these being fossil Martian bacteria. Uh, the chemistry makes sense. The preservation style makes sense. It actually is in the rock and not due to contamination. That makes sense. The age also makes sense. This thing actually postdates this four and a half billion year old rock, so it's about three to three and a half billion. So that makes sense. But the reason, the reason people said, oh no, that can't be real, is because it was too dinky, too small to be bacteria. People said, oh, if you look at bacteria on Earth today, there's no way 